Hi Providence, Mark and I want to update you on our UK Africa trip and as you know Providence is laser focused on making, growing and unleashing disciples of Jesus Christ here near and far. Mark, could you kind of share with us what we saw and what we accomplished in the UK? Yeah, we had started our trip in the uh, UK, actually. We had been invited by an organization called AT3, which is the Alliance for uh, Transatlantic Theological Training. And uh, what these guys are basically involved with is trying to get pastors trained and equipped in order to plant a tremendous number of churches throughout the UK. Uh, part of their ministry as well is to send some students back to the United States to have an exposure to a culture that has is now steeped in post-Christian uh, thinking. And so consequently, as a result, we had an opportunity to meet with a number of churches, uh, see what was going on, meet with some places in London and in Birmingham, England as well. Yeah. And then what I found to be impressive with that was their, their passion for their cities, respectively, uh, the passion to reach England and as well to be able to train up people to reach uh, the new communities that are starting up with so many internationals that are coming in. And consequently, I know particularly in Birmingham, they were looking to plant about 130 churches because it was that many communities and enclaves within the city of Birmingham itself that required that. And so uh, it was just impressive to me to be able to see that. And so we spent most of our time there um, being exposed to some of the students, being exposed to some of the churches, and being exposed to the vision and the ministry of what these places were trying to do. Yeah, and the fact that 40% of the residents in the UK were not born in the UK, what we discovered was there's a huge diaspora push there to make disciples of people who aren't from the UK. And we saw a lot of success there. And along the same line, AT3 is training uh, UK pastors to plant, uh, not just churches for the diaspora, but also for um, the residents in, of, of UK. Mm -hmm. Mark, could you also share with us what we saw and what we saw God doing and some of the things we were doing in Africa? Uh, yeah, in Africa, we had spent really most of our time in Gulu, which is the founding area for Favor Ministry. And from there, we reached out to a number of different places, went out into the countryside to see some of the schools where they're raising up uh, women to be able to be uh, empowered, where they're training their children. And we also found some of the schools that they're conducting to take kids off the street, both boys and girls. And some of the testimonies that we heard from those kids as well just was really significant because some had been out on the streets, they had been involved, frankly, with uh, theft just to, to stay alive. Uh, they were obviously uh, not in good position mentally from physical health, mental health, spiritual health. And so one of the things that they have done is brought them together into these schools and begun to train them, not only in their education, but spiritual formation as well. And consequently, one of the things that will emerge out of that long term are future pastors particularly uh, for those that continue through, stay with the program, and get all of this training, then get to move on to a next level of theological training as well. And we were a part of some of that. As a matter of fact, John spoke a number of times uh, at the pastors and missionary conference that they were having. Uh, interestingly enough, uh, not in any sort of fancy building, but out under a rather large tree. And uh, that's just how things work sometimes when you're there. And so John had a chance to do some training over a couple of hours with them. And uh, these are guys that are going to be either planting churches in the future or are currently involved in church plants right now as well. And so we got to spend some significant amount of time with them. And then additionally, we also went uh, probably two hours out into, uh, I guess you would call it the bush uh, and really see where another church is actually being planted and the church building itself was being dedicated. So uh, we had an opportunity to really see a broad range of ministries that were related to what Favor does there in that northern Uganda area. Yeah, and one of the more encouraging things to me was, as you mentioned, they're raising up an army of potential church planters and leaders that are gonna really change the culture 
in these unreached and unengaged people groups, and they're 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 doing an incredible job of not just raising them up, but also sending them to places like Chad um, that we're very interested in, and I believe we're going to somehow partner with them in planting churches, disciple making churches that plant disciple making churches. The way that they're taking um, children and teenagers and educating them and discipling them in a school setting and taking them off the street, off of cardboards on the street into a bed and really discipling them in a very structured manner. We know that over a period of time, that is going to really explode in an exponential way for church planting throughout Africa. Mark, how can we as a church be praying for these two regions? Yeah, good question, how we can pray. You know, I, when I think of both of these areas, the UK and when I think of Africa, the challenges are great with both and they're so varied. Obviously, UK far more industrialized, but UK has now moved from a postmodern culture to a post-Christian culture. Yeah. And as a consequence, the challenges are even greater for those that are planting churches there. And as well, you mentioned the the diaspora, the, the influx of of internationals that are coming as well creates its own set of challenges because that's why they need in a city like Birmingham to have 130 churches planted because there's 130 different distinct areas. So I would say just in summation, it's it's the challenges that are being faced uh, in those particular areas. And we mentioned the post-Christian culture in England now to a culture where there's still a great deal of hunger in Africa as well. But yet those challenges are going to be different. As you mentioned, Chad, John, when those people move into Chad, and already we've seen some videos of an individual that's been changed, um, has been trained, and has a heart to plant in Muslim Chad. Mm -hmm. And obviously we recognize that because of the religious background that exists in Chad right now, that the not only is it a challenge of reaching the people, but it's a challenge of being safe in that culture as well. And so those are really just being recognizing of, of the, the challenges that exist that are very unique in terms of reaching those people and also the safety for the people that are there and having the wisdom to be able to discern how to best reach either respective group. Yeah, we need to be supporting those leaders going into Chad because it is predominantly Muslim and we need to pray for them. As a matter of fact, Jerry and Gail Christian are heading up our prayer initiative for the work that Favor is doing, and we'd love for you to reach out to them. We'd love to invite you to join our prayer initiative. If you have any other further questions, please don't hesitate to email me, john at providencechurch.com, and we look forward to hearing from you.